Hey everyone, this is Sharon and Jamie from Sharon at Sea. And today we are here to talk about the Carnival Vista. That's right, we are going to talk about our five Vista favorites and our five Vista disappointments. Okay, so let's talk Carnival Vista. Back in March 2017, we were super excited to get on board one of the newest ships to, to, to hit the water here in the States, Carnival Vista. We heard so many amazing things about it, and uh, we had booked that bad boy, and we were ready to get on there and have the most amazing cruise ever. That's right, we were so excited. We were just like so hyped up. Anyway, so we had, uh, I had read several things on social media about how the glass elevators in the atrium were missing on the new ship. Um, although I didn't really, I guess, hit home until we yeah, got on we that ship. didn't put two and two together. Until we got on that ship and when you walk in, usually you get, you know, you see the elevators in the lobby and it's just a kind of a real wow type of a thing when you walk onto the ship for the first time. And that was really disappointing. It was missing here. Um, those elevators really made a difference on that whole just feeling you get when you walk on the ship. Um, everything was kind of really modernized, hotelish looking, which I don't have a problem with modern, but it was just, um, they were just kind of like plain walls like this up where the elevators would have been. And it just really took away. And I don't know, it just, well, it, it, was, was, a, it was a disappointment. And it was a me. bummer because ever <laughs> since our son Matthew was little, like, I mean, the first time he could walk around on his own on the ship, he has been a big fan of the elevators mm -hmm. and uh, getting on those elevators um, on the lobby floor and being able to go up and down and see all the people on the first two or three uh, levels of the ship and then going all the way up to the Lido deck and then once you get off you're able to look down and see all the activity of the people. Mm -hmm. It was just fantastic and not having those elevators, it just yeah, it was really, a disappointment. Yeah, it just really kind of took away from the whole feeling there in the lobby, I, th I think. And, yep. and we didn't spend that much time there actually because of that, it just, yes. we. The lobby bar is kind of one of our favorite areas to hang out in, one of our favorite bars. Yeah. And we just didn't really care to. On it just didn't at home. And that brings yeah, us that does, our to number our two. number two <laughs> disappointment. Now, we are hitting the disappointments right out of the gate. That's we right. We want to talk about them. We want to get them out of the way. And then bring we don't want to go to negative stuff. town, but we have to because we are uh, true, honest, and we tell you how we feel. So, um, so speaking of the lobby, so the new feature in the lobby of the Carnival Vista is the big dreamscape. It's like a big fountain looking martini glass looking type of a and deal they, they are really cool and beautiful yes i, I mean that. and they have lots of video scenes on them and things of that nature and um and it was kind of neat i suppose but the bar itself um uh, was circular and i wasn't a fan of the bar because first off quite often the bartender's back is to me as they're on the other side of the bar taking care of somebody i'm not a fan of that also from my seat i could see behind the bar i could see the floor the dishes um, all the bottles and things like that. It just wasn't a great view and, and a great feel. And I will also mention that the dreamscape, as beautiful as it was, I'm not sure I saw more than four or five different visuals on that thing the entire time. I felt like every time I went down there, I was seeing the same thing, either some palm trees or like an ocean animal swimming by yeah, or something. So, uh, um, you know, again, that, that was something, an area that we're always so excited to spend time in. And on this one, the the lobby bar and the dreamscape feature i was a little bit disappointed in that yeah and also when you're up on the decks four and five and you look down on the lobby bar you could actually see the trash cans and you could see that they were just all overflowing with trash and usually you know on the other ships you it, that's all tucked away sure yeah it, behind the bar yep, you know, yep but you could see all the trash and all the you know just all the mess behind yes. the bar it just so when you're you were you couldn't see it down on deck three, but when you're up above, you could look down and see it, and it just really kind of took away from the the nice look of, of it is seeing all that trash and you know the mess down there. Yeah, so it's just just not a great view, and um, not what we're used to from the uh, from the atrium uh, bar, the lobby bar. So uh, a little bit bummed out by that. Yeah. All right, another disappointment we had was the Havana Cabanas. That's right. I know they're supposed to be a really big deal. Everyone wants to book one. Oh yeah, they're the hottest thing going right Havana. now. Um, and we did not have one. I will say we did not have one, but we were lucky enough to go. We had a cabin crawl with our Facebook group and we were lucky enough to be able to view a couple um, cabanas as well as several other Havana cabins. And we were expecting just a lot more privacy in them. You know, we thought it, it was gonna be amazing. Now the um, inside room itself 
is is good it, you know it's great it's a nice sure. balcony but when you go out on the balcony area which is more like a patio there's just like what about a two foot fence you yeah say? i mean the the way that it's set up it's on deck five um and so uh similar if you're on a balcony you walk out your door and you're on your little balcony and you're overlooking you can see the ocean and such well since the, these are on deck five you go out your your door and where there would be a balcony there's kind of a little patio area now it's a bigger area and it's kind of extended so it's got size and there's chairs and i think i even remember a hammock being yeah, out there in a there couple a of hammock. them so that's kind of cool but um right outside of your little area of your patio there's another eight or ten feet of the promenade area where people can walk up and down so you could go out and sit out, out on your little uh uh, patio area and right in front of you can be a, a couple sitting there with their camera taking pictures yeah. of the ocean or a couple folks you know jabber john or something like that so it really took away from what we would have hoped would have been a, a little private neat feature yeah. so uh so the patio was just a little bit of a disappointment there in how it was set up and the lack of privacy yeah and i know that during the day um, supposedly those gates are locked and only the people staying back there can um, be walking back and forth uh, but that's still people walking back and forth and if after seven at night anyone can go back there yeah. which is even worse because at night you may have your drapes open and anyone can be walking past there and they can see everything inside your cabin sure so um and people do that at night too because everyone's curious about that area so that's they sneak back there. yeah they you know, can they go see, back there and like it, we're not so. talking about like changing or anything but just if you don't you know if you yeah. have your drapes open to be able to see out there then anyone walking in if you have your lights on your cabin can see what's yeah. going on yeah. whether you're laying on the bed watching tv chilling out or whatever yeah so we just felt like there just wasn't any privacy back there and the fact that they charge so much more for those cabins oh yeah um yeah i would never pay that price oh we were super I excited to see and check it out thinking maybe next time we'd go ahead and book one but i'll tell you what yeah i don't think no, we're gonna go down that we're road. not a fan of them not yeah. at all so there you go a little disappointed at the havana cabana That's cabins right. all right so three down two more to go number four of our carnival vista disappointments you know we've been on a number of cruises and we're pretty lucky to have been on a number of cruises and we've experienced a lot of different levels of service some better than others but we've come to expect a certain you know uh experience when we go on a carnival ship yeah, just average it's <laughs> not the greatest thing in the world it's not five star type of yeah. treatment we're aware of that we're not picky but, but when we went on the vista and and we had heard a few things to this extent but we we're going to check it out ourselves but i'll tell you what we experienced a lot of issues where the service just wasn't great our room steward I mean, honestly, it was mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. Slow on the service, um, really not much interaction. Um, you know, it had to wait for things if we asked for them and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Our dining experience, they were nice enough, but the service just wasn't there. We yeah, weren't wowed of by them. Disorganized, you know, yeah. everything was kind of slow and just, mm -hmm. just waited a long just time. We waited pace. a long time for food, which sometimes is no, you know, no, no fault of the of the server. But other times we waited a while for the servers to get there to bring our food. A couple of mistakes as far as our orders went and things of that nature. Um, and then one of the things that really threw us was uh, we ate lunch on one of the last oh, days yeah. in the uh, uh, Cap Cucina Capitano. And that's one of the Italian fair uh, uh, restaurants there. When you go for lunch, there's no charge. If you go to for dinner, there's a small charge. Yeah. And we went there and that was probably the worst service that we had had. Yeah, we do, We that's kind of a ritual we have. We go every cruise, if there is a Cucina del Capitano oh, yeah. on the ship, we go on the very last sea day mm -hmm. to lunch there. And so that's what we did. And why do we and do it? Why do we do it on the last sea day? We do it on the last sea day. Here's another tip for you because pasta is very filling and kind of gets oh, you all yeah. loaded. And if you do it on the first day, you're going to start your cruise just all bloated and you know you're going to be up. eating a ton of food all week. So yes. we wait till the very end to get even more bloated. I yes. guess you and then say. we like to destroy ourselves with a monster's bowl <laughs> and of then pasta. We're, then we're off the ship and home. Yes. So, <laughs> anyway. we, so when we went this time, um, the service was bad. Uh, we waited and waited for they our food. They forgot some of they, our they brought they one of our have. plates and I had to get up and go ask the server for, for the other one. <laughs> Um, it was just a that bad deal crazy, to the yeah. point where a table next to us was noticing uh, what we went through after they had gotten there. So I think they were kind of like, wow, what's going on in here? Yeah. Is it going to be that bad for us as well? So, uh, I mean, we ended up getting the food finally, which was mediocre. Maybe it was the experience kind of took away from it. Um, Sorry, I keep saying medi mediocre. Uh, uh, that's my new word of the day. So, um, but yeah, the the service is off in the yeah, uh, just, in the yeah. the Capitano, the Cucina de Capitano, yeah. and um, and so. you know, it might be better now. Like I said, this was a, a while ago. We're just 
telling you our disappointments with yes. the Vista. So there you have it. Uh, service was definitely not what we've come to expect uh, from power. our Carnival On the Cruises. Newer Vista. That's yes. right. All right, and our last disappointment, number five. Number five. And then we will move on to the good stuff, our favorite things. Anyways, it is the Liquid Lounge, which is their main theater, showroom yes, theater. The Forward Theater. That's right. Um, and I'm going to, is what it was a disappointment was the seating. The seating was, uh, it was just horrible. Um, on most of the carnival ships, the seating, they have like benches and you have a little table in front of you where you can set your drink and, you know, it's just more yes. roomy. Oh yeah, the, bench, were, the curved bench style seating, yeah. very comfortable cushions. Uh, I mean, uh, you can just sit there and relax right. and, and, uh, these, and stretch out your legs yeah. a little. And, and it's even fantastic. if you're um, like on before the shows, if you're playing bingo or things like that, you have a place to put your little bingo thing. You know, here sure. there's nowhere to set anything. Um, your drink, you have to hold the whole time. You know, you don't want to set it on the floor, of course. You know, someone might knock it over. And, well, yeah, because you know. I, and I heard my, there are multiple times when we were in there, uh, drinks were getting knocked <laughs> yeah. over, glasses breaking and things like that. Yeah, and I, and I see the reason behind it. The reason behind it is because this way they can move the chairs around for some of their new playlist production shows. And I understand that, but it's just a very uncomfortable seating arrangement for people watching the show. Yeah. The seats are small, they're close together. Like I said, there's no cup holder and you just kind of feel crunched in. And that's on the bottom. That's that's just the bottom. When you go up to decks, the next, the upper decks, where the seats kind of normally angle up, you know, so you can see over the person in front of you, mm -hmm. um, they don't angle up. So if someone's taller than you in front of you, um, you can't really see yeah, over Yeah, it doesn't head. have that angle where you can just see down and over somebody. It's just set up a little bit yeah. weird. Also, there's a lot more um, of the big um, metal poles um, in there, so they're... Obstruction. Yeah, so when you're on one of the upper decks looking out, besides not being able to see over someone's head, you may have a big pole <laughs> in your yes. way as well. So yeah, the seating and the whole theater setup is just... Uh, really, really bad design. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, taking away the bench seats where you're comfortable with the room for, for the server to come through and get you drinks and bring you things and stuff like that. And now you're just talking about chairs next to each other with yeah. barely any room between you and the chair in front of you. Yeah. Bad deal. Yeah, and you know, the shows were good. It's just just a whole uncomfortable situation sitting there watching them. It, it kind of made you not really want to go sometimes just because you don't want to you know, you were yeah, you just more, deal with that. Yeah, you're just more comfortable sitting in there. So there you have it. So those that, are the top five disappointments mm -hmm. from our Carnival Vista Cruise. That's right. And uh, now, what's going to come next? Let's talk about some of our, our our five favorites on the Vista. Yeah, I mean, listen, we don't want to go. We don't want to stay in negative town. We want to uh, get on out of here. Um, there was a lot of good on the Vista too. Yes, <laughs> for sure. So let's point that out now. All right. Okay. So when I think about one of my favorite things about the Carnival Vista, the first thing that comes to mind got to be Mike Pack. Our cruise director, Mike Pack, on that cruise yeah. was amazing. Now I know this is, I don't know if this is a fair, unfair, you know, uh, five favorite things because Mike's not going to be on that ship forever and he's bounced around and he's gone to some other ships since then. In fact, we've seen him on other ships, but um, you know, there was a time we didn't pay a lot of attention to the cruise director. Uh, they were sometimes even an afterthought. And this is really the first time, at least yeah. for me. Well, this that, is the that, first time. Um, well, this is the first time experiencing Mike Pack too. We've never had him before. Well, sure, and, but the, and he was amazing, and he really, uh, I mean, the things that he did and uh, the entertainment he had and provided really just enhanced my whole experience on the ship. And uh, one of my favorite parts was uh, at the end of the cruise on one of the last nights, he actually took uh, the GoPro uh, from us because we were in the uh, we were in the liquid lounge, so we made yeah. it in there. We, uh, we got front row seats because we knew that would be the only place we'd be comfortable sitting in there. <laughs> um, and uh, Mike Pack came down and grabbed our GoPro and ran up on stage and ended up GoPro in the crowd with it. Yeah. And uh, he that was, was just fantastic. So, uh, so Carnival Vista provided us uh, my first time, and I think Sharon's too, yeah. are really starting to um, engage with a cruise director and uh, have them be a big, big part of uh, the trip. So yeah, and he's he just a really—he awesome. turned out to be a real genuine, nice guy. We, oh, yeah. we spoke with him a little bit, and he actually sent a nice gift to our cabin for our son, and you know, and had a handwritten note, which I found out later he handwrites all of his notes to everyone. That's a little thing that he just does, mm -hmm. and which is like really nice. You know, he doesn't have an assistant do it. He doesn't type it up. Yeah, he handwrites everything himself. himself. It's pretty awesome. You know, he's just a real genuine guy, and and. 
We really, really enjoyed him. So there you go. So one of my favorite things, cruise director Mike Pack on our Carnival Vista cruise. That's right. And number two. Number two is? This is one of my favorites. Oh yeah, you love okay, it. Although a lot of um, the cruise ships have the sports deck and we love most all the areas oh, on yeah. the sports the deck. The sports square. Sports square on the Vista. Um, my favorite thing was the sky ride. That's mm, right. You loved it. I did. Right, those little I was cars a little bit around the sky. I was afraid too when I first got up. Oh, first I wasn't afraid. I got up there, and right before I took off, I was like, "Oh my gosh, what have I got myself into?" <laughs> and then it takes off, and you're like up in the air over all this stuff, and you get this really weird feeling at first, and then you're just kind of like pedaling quick because you just want to get it over with for a while. No, oh yeah. Then all of a sudden you just start relaxing. You're just really enjoying it. Um, so, but it was a lot of fun. Well, I, and I Sharon raced. was in a fierce race with uh, our yeah. son Matthew, I, yeah. and uh, they were going head to head. Yeah. And I had the pleasure of just laying low and uh, taking pictures and videotaping the whole thing yeah. because um, I don't know, I'm a pretty big kid, and I wasn't quite sure of the comfort level of me on that sky ride. So, as yeah, usual, was... and as a good husband, I laid back <laughs> and uh, videotaped it for memories. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, that was that was probably one of my favorite things I've ever done on the ship. Yes, it was just. A great experience. Yep, so Carnival Vista, the Sky Ride. It's one Everyone's of the favorites. Everyone's got to do it once. Go check it out. <laughs> now, there was one other thing that uh, Carnival Vista had that I hadn't experienced on any other cruise ships. I, I guess think they have it on some other ones a, now. A but couple of them have it now, but maybe not in the same that, way yeah, it was then, then I think on it was the Vista. The, it was the first one, I think. Yeah, so they had the Seafood Shack. They have a, a little area where you can get seafood. It, it was in the aft part of the ship, um, and uh, they had they had fried seafood, they had a little bit of broiled seafood. You could get like poor boy sandwiches and a lobster BLT sandwich. And they even had oysters on the half shell. Now there was a charge for that, okay? It's a little bit of an upcharge. And I know whenever people see uh, something that costs a few extra dollars on the cruise ship, the first thing they say is, ah, oh, that's just a cruise line trying to gouge you and take extra money and things like that. And um, I don't know, maybe there's a little bit of truth to that. I mean, they gotta make money, but they're bringing in like lobster tails and things like this. Yeah. So the seafood shack was fantastic. I enjoyed some clams there, some fried shrimp. Uh, it was amazing and it was nice to just be able to go and get some really good, yeah. tasty, fresh seafood at any time of the day, uh, during the day while that little uh, station was open. Yeah, that's a great addition they put on there for, especially for all the seafood lovers, just to have a spot to kind of go get a little seafood because that's one thing that the ships really didn't have um, is something where you could just get seafood. You know, they had all different, you know, yeah. a lot of other types of food, but but not really a special just seafood. Sure, place. and it takes a minute for that stuff to be produced, unlike something like a Guy's Burgers where they're just <laughs> turning them, burning those things, or the burritos where they're making them right in front of you at the Blue Iguana. Um, here they actually gave you one of those little buzzers like you get in a restaurant when you go wait for your table and you held on to that for a few moments while they made what you needed. Everything, Anything that was fried was fresh fried to order and things like that. Uh, the oysters were, were shucked right there. Um, so nothing sitting around waiting. And uh, it was just fantastic. Tasted great and a great addition uh, to the cruise and a great feature on the Carnival Vista. All right, and number four, another one of our favorites was the Kids Club. Oh yeah. Of course. We're not kids, but our, our, our son really enjoyed the kids club. And when he enjoys the kids club, we enjoy it. And we enjoy the cruise. That's right. But the kids club on the Vista was amazing. It was probably uh, the best out of all the carnival ships. I would say it is was the biggest and the best kids club out there. Um, it had, they had so many, like a lot of new things in there that they didn't have on some of the other ships. Mm -hmm. um, also, I was um, lucky enough to interview the director, Lori, when I was on the ship for our, oh, um, yeah, for, our awesome. yeah, for our channel here. And since I also have a, a gr Facebook group called Cruising Carnival with Kids, uh, I had asked people to give me questions. And so I asked all those questions in the interview as well and answered a lot of the questions for people out there. Um, but yeah, she was very friendly. She went over a lot of the, the things um, that they have, you know, mm -hmm. answered a lot of questions. And so that was great. That was a lot of fun. And I will link that video for any of you that have kids. So I will link that um, either below here or above somewhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, the kids club, it was, it was just, it was great. It, they had a lot of activities and our son loved it. There you go. So if your family traveling with kids and uh, you're on the Vista, you are in luck. They'll yeah. be very well taken That's care right. of. That's right. Although, if it's one of your first cruises, they're going to be really spoiled. And if they go on a smaller ship, they may not like mm, it as much. Keep that in mind. Yeah. 
because the kids club was pretty awesome on the Vista. There you go. So that was number four of our favorite Vista. And number five? Number five is, um, I'll tell you what, we, something that we- discovered us something We discovered bit. this. It's and, not new now, but- and we, We've experienced it a few times. So we went on the Vista <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, we mentioned about the, the atrium lobby. There was one great reason to be down in the lobby and that was uh, the String Trio. Um, on this particular ship, it was a, a group called strings. Allure Strings. And first time seeing it, and like Sharon said, you can see it on a lot of ships now. It's become quite popular. But there's a group of three violinists. They play music and they play along with music. And they play along with all the favorites. They have anything from what sounds like uh, background dinner music to playing along with uh, Guns N' Roses and Metallica yeah. songs. It really was amazing. It As it gets a little later in the evening, they really like pick up the, the yes. vibe there. And, and, and listening to these girls play, and, and on other times we had seen a couple other groups with some guys and girls in it, but this particular group, um, they were amazing, amazing fantastic. Yeah. Um, got a chance to go say hi to them real quick, and that was awesome. And uh, it was just something we hadn't seen before. Usually there's like a solo guitar player or maybe like a group of two people with some background music singing along or something like that. But boy, this three piece uh, string group um, with, the, with the violins was tremendous. Yeah. And um, we found ourselves actually several nights, we found ourselves just sitting there watching them. Yes. We were just so like, amazed they were just so talented yeah for sure because yeah. you can go you can go on the on the the deck board um where they'll have seats going around um the uh the, the outside of the area the there yeah yep. and we would just sit there and hang out and have a drink and uh, watch them play and listen to them play and they were fantastic and we're super excited that our next cruise which will be on the dream we just found out a few days back okay. they will be on that ship That's as right. well so at that we time really excited yes to Listen to them some more. <laughs> so they totally turned us on to the new uh, string deal that they have on a lot of ships yeah. now. The string trio, fantastic music and a great way to spend a little time relaxing right. uh, with a cold beverage. So, uh, right. um, so that was awesome. So that was definitely one of my favorite things about the visit. Mine too. All right. Well, we went over our five disappointments and our five favorites of the Vista. Yes. So hope this was helpful to you and let us know in the comments below what you experienced if you've been on the vista let us know what yeah, what do you like what do you dislike yeah, would you go know. on the vista again over another ship yeah how did you like it if if not you know if you have any questions about it post those in the comments below as well and yep. we will try to answer them the best we can and you can watch a little bit of our experience if you want to watch our uh, vista vlogs yes. through the channel on sharon and see just make sure that you uh like the videos give us a thumbs up please if you like it and uh, make sure you subscribe uh, so you can get notified when we do our live show and all that good stuff. So uh, we sure appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy cruising. Happy cruising.